Apollo 1114 and here's my RAS BMC Media Center. As you can see, it doesn't look very much different from what you would expect. Um, it's just the original Raspberry Pi board sitting inside a multi-com case. I've added a wireless adapter. This one's a 2.4 GHz N adapter with a good antenna. Uh, we've got the wireless keyboard receiver and the original RAS BMC 4 GB card. So, the main thing we need to do is to power it up and watch it go. So I've already done several things which you should do when you're playing around with RAS BMC. The first of it which is to update RAS BMC. And uh, this in itself can take about half an hour and you'll see it reboot over and over and over again. But just be patient, it'll get there. Um, other than that, things like configuring the overscan, configuring the resolution you want it to sync with the TV. For example, I've changed mine to uh, 1080p instead of using 720p, um, just to get a clearer picture for the high def stuff. And uh, you can install whatever plugins you'd like and uh, configure all the network servers you want. So in my case, I've got one network server that I've got on the network which I've configured. You'll notice that the UI is a little bit slow, but that's uh, considered fairly normal for this. So I've just gone into files and uh, you should see that's one of my um, network shares. This is a uh, SMB share from a Windows uh, file server on the network. So we can say choose a video from it and it will stream from the wireless which is quite good. Um, this means that you don't need to have any local content on a USB key or anything directly connected. So you can see this is the little navigation bar which you can have if you uh, want to say skip ahead or um, skip backwards. There are also plugins available for SBMC which allow you to say connect it with YouTube. So I've got YouTube installed at the moment. This there is a little bit of a uh, guide on how to do this if you just look at the RAS BMC quick setup guide. Um, in itself it sort of works but depending on what sort of clips you want to watch you may or may not get access to it. So um, don't be surprised if there are a few bugs because many of these plugins are still under refinement. Um, most importantly to get yourself set up properly you'll need to use this here under programs as RAS BMC settings and this is specific for use with the RAS BMC for example if you want to change the type of network you're connected to uh, for me I'm on a Wi-Fi DHCP based network uh, keying in the SSID and password and encryption type um, if you want to update RAS BMC you just toggle that and then hit OK um, and that will start the update process and that can take about um, half an hour uh, or so depending on how old your RAS BMC is. Um, under system configuration there's actually quite a few interesting things which uh, you may want to use. For example here the MPEG2 codec license and VC1 codec key. If you've purchased the keys from the Raspberry Pi organization to unlock those codecs you may enter them there as well as system performance profile which allows you to overclock the Raspberry Pi and get a little bit more performance out of it. Uh, we've been recommended only to go up to fast and not up to super because uh, in some cases super can cause corruption of SD cards but what I also find is that super can cause some of the Raspberry Pis to lock up especially uh, if it hasn't got sufficient cooling. Uh, if you enable advanced overclocking you can choose exactly what sort of clocks you want for each part of the CPU. Um, there's also uh, the ability to change whether certain services are running, say if you want to have a VNC server so you can remotely connect in and remotely control the keyboard and mouse and see the vision on screen you can do so as well but um, by default there is a plethora of services which are already enabled which you can use which are quite handy the other important part is to go on the system and uh, under settings because this allows you to configure virtually everything else uh, the default skin that's used in RAS BMC is Confluence and I do quite like it, it looks quite nice um, 
the first thing I typically do is go on the system and here you can choose say your resolution so I've got 1080p at 60 hertz um, you can change this to whatever you please so um, if you want your UI to be a little bit more responsive uh, 720p seems to be the one to choose and so if you just let it sit there for a little bit it will change your resolution automatically and then you can decide whether you want to keep it audio output allows you to choose whether you want your audio to be output over HDMI connection or not um, if you've got a relatively new TV um, then HDMI audio output seems to be the right thing to do uh, in the case that you are using an adapter, say from HDMI to VGA or HDMI to DVI, which does not support audio, you can actually change this so the audio comes out of the analog jack, which is the blue jack, on the Raspberry Pi. So I'll just leave this on HDMI because that's what I'm using. Um, there are several different things you can um, set up, say proxy access, uh, auto shutdown and other locks, but that's not really too important. The other thing to look at is services. So you can have a lot of different things. You can set up, say, the device name. If you've got several of these on the network, this might help you distinguish it. Uh, UPnP, um, Discovery, uh, Remote Control Web Service. So you can actually log in using uh, a web browser, say, on your smartphone and control RASBMC remotely. Um, things like AirPlay even, which I wasn't aware of until now, you can actually allow uh, your XBMC to work as an AirPlay uh, receiver, which um, <laughs> is a pleasant surprise. And likewise, SMB client is already installed by default, so you can actually connect to Windows shares among uh, a whole lot of other shares. So if you just look on the file manager, uh, you can see what sort of um, sources are supported. So under add source, if you tap on that, and you tap under browse, you can see a whole list of types of sources it supports, say NFS, uh, UPnP, uh, SMB or Windows Sharing, and a Zero Conf as well. Um, so you've got a whole lot of uh, sources for files uh, that you can use, but uh, interestingly if you do, say, try to do so under videos, you'll actually find a few more different sorts of sources that you can uh, use. So under Add Videos, if you tap on Browse, You'll also find that it supports, say, the HD, uh, HD Home Run tuners, which uh, allow you to watch TV over a network, uh, replay TV, um, just to name a few. So it's, it's a very versatile device, as you can see. Um, although one of the things is that straight after booting, and uh, especially if you're browsing the plugins, it may be tempted to update the add-ons, which makes it a little bit slow. But on the whole, it's a... Um, it's an interesting device, it's very flexible, it seems to play almost everything I've thrown at it. Things like uh, AVI files with uh, H.263 or DivX encoding and MP3 audio, no trouble. Uh, Matroska MKV with uh, H.264 audio and Dolby Digital, oh sorry, H.264 video and Dolby Digital audio, no problem either. And uh, of course uh, MPEG-4 H.264 with uh, AAC audio coding is all just fine. Um, but videos encoded with MPEG-2 don't seem to play, the audio does, but the video doesn't, and uh, it looks like you will have to get a license key to be able to play those. Um, so that's my home media centre. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and thank you very much Element14 for providing this unit for review.